Hello and welcome back to part two of the Mini Pro TL866 upgrade mod. To complete this modification and make this device a true TL866 version A, we need to add a serial header to the side. To quickly recap, in part one we successfully updated the firmware making this a TL866 version A. The final step of this little project is a hardware modification, adding a serial port header to the side, making this a true TL866A. So let's get started. Wow, with only four screws to remove, this is really easy to open. And the first thing I really want to look at is this ICSP cap covering the hole here on the side. Forums online say just to snap it off with pliers, but it looks like it's just a filler cap. And yes. It just slides out. I, no cutting or snapping involved. Very nice. And we're left with a nice, clean, and tidy opening for our serial header. I see the manufacturer has scratched off the microcontroller information, but having done a little research, I know it's a PIC 18F87J50. And if you're interested in more in-depth information on this particular PIC microcontroller, I will post a link below to the Microchip Technology website where you can find all the particulars. Okay, so back on the microcontroller side of the PCB, we're going to find six plated through holes. And that's where our little serial header is going to connect to. You can see them here. They are very easy to spot on the edge of the board. Now on the flip side, this is the actual mounting location of the header, so we have to work in between those two PCBs to insert the little header and soldering the pins on the opposite side. I did my best to find a pin header that most closely matched the one already pre-installed in the TL866A version. And what I came up with after a lot of searching of forums and blogs was a multi-comp brand MC34649. However, this brand only seems to be available in European markets and difficult for me to get at a cheap price. But after some further investigation, I did find another company called Sullins that makes the identical header with the exact same specifications and that's what you're looking at here. Alright, so using tweezers we need to get in between here and insert the pins in the plated through holes. Oh my god, what a wretched sound. And it doesn't want to go in. Does it fit at all? I know the pitch is correct. They fit that way. Oh. But the pins seem to be slightly too large for the holes. That's annoying. Okay, new plan of attack. I'm going to desolder this pin here, which seems to be securing the two boards together, because I want to have a better look between them. Alright, so that was easy enough. Let's see if we can separate it. There. Okay, so I just want to separate the two boards enough. They're in there quite tight, just enough so I can get in there with uh, my fingers and properly fit the header. It is a tight fit. And if I use both eyes, I would notice there's another pin also holding the board together, so that has to be desoldered now. Okay, and let's try this again. They are joined tightly, that's for sure. Ah, I've noticed something else. The leads of the LEDs pass through the top board and are soldered to the bottom board, leaving just about a 2mm gap distance between the top board and the bottom of the LED. 
So if I want to separate everything completely, I'm going to have to desolder the LEDs as well, which I don't want to do. But given that there is a little bit of gap space between the base of the LED and the top of the PCB right there, I think I have the one side lifted up enough now that I can work in comfortably. And while I'm fiddling around with this, I guess it's important to note too, you don't have to use this exact pin header that I have here. I did want it to match the TL866A. Also, I think this style of pin header with the flat plastic base along the bottom does add stability and over time will reduce the stress on the solder joints from all the plugging and unplugging that'll happen. Now, as I look at these a little bit closer, I suspect I might be in a little bit of a size matters situation here. And I'm not sure what the tolerances are on either the pins or the holes in the PCB themselves, but I think we're dealing with maybe a fraction of a millimeter too wide of a pin or too small of a hole, so I might have to file the pins down a bit. I have decided to try filing the pins down just a little bit. I am using a very fine metal file and I don't want to take off too much, just a little bit from either side and try fitting it in the PCB again. And now just a little bit off this side. Now, it might sound aggressive, but I'm using very, very light pressure while I do this. I don't want to take off much at all. You can see the filings. There's not very much material coming off at all. Now let's try to fit this again. Oh, perfect. And it's in. It went in rather easily once we removed just a little bit of material with some light filing. So all that's left to do is to solder this in place, put everything else back together, and we will be done. Okay, so the header's in place, which looks pretty good, and we just have to squeeze everything back together and re-solder those stability pins. There. Good as new. Okay, let's fire it up and make sure it works. I think we're good to put this back in its case and when we're done we will have ourselves a Mini Pro TL866 version A including an in-circuit serial programming header just like the real McCoy beauty looks good very happy I'm really pleased how this little project turned out. If you need more information on the serial port pinout itself, just Google TL866 ICSP pinout and you'll get all kinds of diagrams and pictures with all the information you need. I hope everyone watching found this video to be useful. Please rate and comment below. As I say, I love your comments. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time and see you soon.